Good morning. Good morning. Branding the brain is today's title. We're all familiar with it. It's not the first time I've mentioned it, but I wanted to discuss it a little bit more today to brand in your brains that we're being branded in our brains by the so-called world. And of course, this technique is literally as old as the hills and it's born out of mankind's desire to get one over on someone else, really, that's what it amounts to. And while this does take on many shapes and forms and variations, methods, it's simply the art of lying. We all have lied. Has anybody lied in here, ever lied? And did you do it out of an accident or did you want to do it? Ah, uh, you wanted to do it. And so you crafted this lie to look as real as possible to make it look like the truth, but it isn't, and it wasn't. Isn't that true? We've all done it. Forgive us, Lord. God hates liars. Liars have no place in heaven, the Bible tells us, in various places. But we see this really pushed to the limit in politics and in business and in advertising, and of course they call it propaganda. Same thing. And this outright lying is obviously acceptable to the world. Shouldn't be acceptable to us Christians, but it is acceptable to the world. The godless masses don't really mind being lied to in this fashion. They think that, well, it's for a good reason. And while I've discussed in the past that we don't owe evil anything, including the truth. We don't tell, you know, some home invader or some robber how to make their job or their desire easier. It's okay to not tell them the truth about what you have, who's in the house, who's not whether you have a weapon or not. None of that's any of their business, okay? Because you're in danger. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And, uh, but to lie for your personal gain when you don't have to, to lie to get somebody else into trouble, to lie to God, certainly, uh, those things are unacceptable. Not telling the truth is one thing. Lying is another. And I pray that you would get that in your mind pretty straight because it'll help you in whatever you do from here on out. So it is acceptable to the world. It's just par for the course. It's just natural even. Men have devised ways of lying for self-gain. And every social status does this. Rich people lie to the other rich people and poor people. And poor people lie to other poor people. And rich people. Students lie to their teachers. And teachers, unfortunately, lie to their students. Doctors lie to their patients. And patients lie to their doctors. And certainly our leaders lie to us. And in many ways we lie to them by saying, Oh, it's okay, I'm not going to cause too much of a fuss right now. Okay. So, lying is pretty popular in the world. As it should be and the self or taking care of number one is what lies behind all this lying it's a selfish thing in the end isn't it humanity has swallowed the devil's spiel hook line and sinker now God commands us all to treat our neighbors as we treat ourselves how does the Bible say do do that it says to love them Mark 12, 30 and 31, one of many examples. We have to love them like we already love ourselves. If we lie to ourselves, are we really loving ourselves? And many people lie to themselves just to get a quick fix, to get a quick feel good, to get a quick high, to get a quick victory or perceived victory. It's crazy to lie to yourself, yet we do it. We're talking about branding the brain. Now we already know that this love that the world has has no resemblance to what it really is. And we've called it intelligent love, the agape kind of godly love that discerns between good and evil. 
and is recognized with and by deeds of compassion. If you're compassionate, thinking selflessly towards somebody else, then you are in this type of love. Hallelujah. Uh, Tim Mackey, who I consider a pretty good theologian, and some others refer to this real biblical love as loyal love as well. It comes from the Hebrew word chesed, and which includes compassion, generosity, listen to this, enduring commitment. Although simultaneously, just like, you know, knowing God and all of that, and faith has to have the three or four main things at the same time, this is no different. Generosity, compassion, enduring commitment. It's the non-committal of real things that drives humanity crazy. They claim to be one in unity, but there's no commitment to it. So this Hebrew for compassion is the word rachum, or the noun rachamim, and both words are related to the Hebrew word for womb. Interesting. That word is rachem. And the word's meaning centers around a person's core and gives them, or rather gives a picture of a mother's care and love for her loyalty to her helpless little baby child. That's what the word ultimately means in Hebrew. Deeply moved is another expression that could be used. But discernment is the key. Being able to tell the difference, what was Adam and Eve warned of. If you eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be able to tell the difference between the two now you have no knowledge of evil, but once you know this, now you're going to have to make choices because you now know the difference. You know that one's good and you know that the other one is bad. And I mean really bad. So discernment is the key as evil itself is utilized and disseminated intelligently. Are you hearing me? Evil is disseminated intelligently to where some biblical scholars have given it the term intelligent evil. Interesting, huh? I mentioned earlier about we've all lied and we've tried to make it look like the truth. Isn't that intelligent evil? Yeah, we try to paint it something it isn't. Wow. So because of discernment, or the fact that discernment is actually absent from the world generally, Evil done intelligently wins many battles over the thoughts and minds of men and women and children. Evil isn't just haphazardly thrown in your face. It's intelligently presented. Satan used intelligent evil when he approached Eve instead of Adam. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 2.14 that Adam was not deceived. Wouldn't have been too smart for Satan to go to Adam, would it? He couldn't have deceived him. See, he observed them in the garden, living their lives. How they acted, how they reacted, what they said, what they did. And the devil could tell which of the two was more likely to be deceived. Just by that, it's what he does to you and me. He can't read your mind. He's not God. He doesn't know everything. He must find things out. From minions, either your actions, your words. He can only know what you believe by what you say and do. And once he figures that one out, he knows how to steer his attack to each one of us very specifically. It's a custom attack. He customarily, in, in a certain customs, attacks you like he does nobody else. And he attacks somebody else different from how he attacks you because we are individuals. This is how Satan can detect weaknesses by just watching us. This is why it's so important to do. If you do right, not just think or believe right, but the Bible teaches if you do right, you're going to be accepted. Isn't that what, he, what Cain was told by God? Yeah, if you do right, sin crouches at your door, but you can master it. And you'll show that mastery by what you do. Is anybody hearing me? Mm -hmm. yes. mm. 
The Bible in the Hebrew says ha satan the satan meaning the adversary he branded the brain of eve and since through eve all flesh is conceived incubated and finally brought into this world quite naturally all humanity is tainted with the same brand of having become orphaned because of separation from god no longer in a family relationship with the lord this is why we must be born again in the Spirit and by the Spirit. Hallelujah. So instead of being children of God, humanity have become children of the devil by having accepted Satan's report instead of the report of the Lord. They chose the lie over the truth. They didn't just hear the truth. They experienced it. God said he walked with them every day. In the cool of the day, this is done daily, according to the scriptures. So the only way out is to choose to believe and act on the report of the Lord given to us by the Holy Spirit and recorded and compiled in what we call the Bible, God's holy word. It's by this word that God draws anyone. If you guys get drawn by God, anyone that's drawn by God, it'll be through his word. So mankind, of course, now being tainted, now being branded in the brain to go against God, is working feverishly to distort and destroy that God-likeness. John 1.12 says that believers have the right to become the children of God. If we have to become, then obviously we aren't there naturally anymore, as was the case in the garden before the fall. Think about that. Satan seeks to completely erase God consciousness in mankind and so destroy his image. The Bible says we are in the image of God. Any perversion of that is not accepted by God. In fact, it will be destroyed in eternity. Satan and his minions are working overtime to do this destruction. At the very least, to alter the image enough to where whatever is left over must be rejected by God. See, until you're born again, as a lost person before, you cannot be in the family of God. You don't bear his image, and God will not accept it. Even one little thing out of place that's not in the image of God will be rejected by God. God is merciful. God is just. But God is also exact in that sense. And all it takes is to admit your faults, Repent of them and accept the report of the Lord that he said about his word becoming flesh and saving us from death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. We just sang it. Mm. Jesus did that. You know, Satan doesn't deny God, but he convinces mankind that we're, we're gods ourselves. And we've said this many times and this is not stopping. It's not even slowing down. Men believe themselves to be gods. Look what we can do. We can replace hips with fake hips. We can shoot up rockets. We can talk to one another over a little device across the world. Look what we can do. We don't need some god. We are gods. And in as much as we're not all the way there... We're going to be shortly because look what we've invented. We're becoming these things that the Bible calls God. <clears throat> All mankind needs to do is disobey the Lord by seeking to elevate self above its station. All the self-help stuff. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. 
Self, 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 self. Be self-minded. And God says, no, you already got enough of that. Be others-minded. I'll take care of you. You mind others and help them. And I'll take care of you and then I'll help them. How many of us do that? We need to be very careful in our lives. The older we get, the more I realize this. Now today, in these last of the last days, this whole self-business has gone international and is known as democracy. Now the people of the world brains have been branded to believe in democracy along with science. Man's perceived knowledge of everything. And at the same time, mankind is being branded against one another. The West against the East. No one in politics says, hey, you got enemies in the heavens that are controlling the leaders. The Bible says it. The Bible says our enemies are heavenly powers. And we need to pray and stick to the word of God. We are black against white, especially in the U.S. and South Africa and a few other regions. Ethnic groups versus other ethnic groups all over the world, as Jesus had said in Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And this is how it's sold to an unsuspecting and self-deceived world. They want it. They want the lie. They love the lie. Give me more lies so I can play God. I don't want to be held back by sin. I want to do what I want to do. And so all the so-called race groups are fighting one another. The so-called Black Lives Matter movement is a perversion founded by real-life perverts of all that is holy and just. Nevertheless, this is perpetuated internationally by ignorant, deviant, godless twits. It's what we have, folks. So what else can the devil do to perpetuate and increase the chaos among mankind? Well, he can and does introduce brandings that instill ideas and government solutions to supposed dangerous enemies. He's always used this, I'm going to put you against you, and them against you, and you against them, and her and him. And the whole time I'm doing that, I'm going to preach togetherness. Oh, let's all stay together. We're all one. We're all in the same boat. We're all together. Every single cult teaches us togetherness. And yet nobody's really together except the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The race card is the oldest and most common. And now they use the term systemic racism. How about sin? Just sin. There is no systemic racism without sin. National pride is a close second demonstrated by Brexit and, you know, America first and all these things. It has a political purpose for sure. And yes, we as Americans have enemies that are human as well as demonic. But when you sell it like it's being sold, it sounds like we're the holy ones and God's on our side and he's not on their side. Yet over there they say, hey, he's on our side, he's not on your side. Well, you know whose side God's on? The one who believes his report. That's whose side he's on. Whether he's over there, over here, up there, down here, doesn't matter where they are. If you believe God's report, he's on your side. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, of course, the third big thing, besides race and, and uh, you know, nationalism, 
the status symbols of wealth and positions of authority, they go hand in hand, Proverbs 22, 7, right? And there are many, many more. But those are the three big ones, how the world fools everyone to believe that they're one, yet they know they're not. Every single person knows they're not one with anybody else down the street, let alone in the city or the state or the nation or internationally. Everybody knows this. It's nonsense. Only in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is there true unity because of Jesus Christ. Mm, I love it. See, to include all these successfully, like Satan must do, different kinds of foes must be invented. In politics, this is called false flag attacks by non-nationals or independent or foreign enemies. They did it. They brought the Twin Towers down. They blew up the ship. They attacked us somewhere over here. We didn't do anything. We're innocent, but they did it. Everybody's saying it. See, I can remember that littering was such an enemy. Those of you who are close to my age, you know this. Littering, littering was an enemy of the United States. Did you know that? You know what littering is? Yeah, you know what littering is. Throwing stuff around, paper, food, just throwing it around, unkempt, the whole thing. That was going on in America. So in response, the Anheuser-Busch Corporation assumed the lead role of fighting this common enemy with ad campaigns galore. This was in the 70s and 80s. It was big. In fact, I worked for Anheuser-Busch, and it was big there. You sure knew it. If you, if you didn't know it before, you knew if you worked for them. They designed special trash container with logos at the time. The campaign was called Keep... America beautiful. <coughs> that was nationwide. Now their ads are keeping track of vaccinations in the nation and promising free beer to all if the U.S. meets Biden's goal of 70% fully vaccinated by Independence Day. Of course, that is past and gone. It didn't happen. Yeah. During our recent trip to Colorado, we noticed lighted signs across the freeway in places flashing the message, stay alert, get vaxxed, and stay safe. Three things, da, 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 just like they can't miss it. They are branding drivers. They were attempting to brand my brain to follow this nonsense. I know better because I know my God and my Savior, hallelujah. Ow! That's good stuff. Yeah. Now around the same time as the litter ads in the 70s, forest fires became another enemy. So a design, listen to me, a designed mental picture which would lead all of us to join this cause was created in Smokey the Bear. Dressed in forest ranger's garb. Again, ads galore. All of us who are old enough remember, only you can prevent forest fires. That was the phrase on posters and all over the place. Have we prevented forest fires? No. Is the West not burning down in some places right now as I'm speaking? And the rest of the world? Yeah. The whole thing is crazy. Slowly, global warming was introduced as an enemy, so dangerous that the world was going to burn up and everyone would die if we didn't go along with the government's solutions. Drug addiction was another enemy that we all have to fight together by following the guidelines and or the command of the federal government and the completely evil World Health Organization. Now, we're not going to blame individuals for any of this. See, an enemy has to be something all could agree on, something that outside of personal responsibility, like it's not my fault. And so the substances themselves were blamed. You know, it was the match, not the guy who struck the match and burnt down the forest. 
so the substances were outlawed, but the problems persisted. Even more substances were in fact produced and offered to the people via the world's uh, synthetic compounds of drugs. Amphetamines were popularly blamed for a while. That was the biggest enemy the health of America and the world had. And currently the big enemy in pharmaceuticals are opioids. These are all termed crisis, pandemics, end of life scenarios. We're branded. They're attempting to brand us all. Besides the substances themselves, certain doctors are blamed for oversubscribing them. Never, ever is the user or the abuser openly blamed. Somehow, it's not their fault. See, if they admitted to it, they'd have to say, maybe sin does play a part. But they can't have any vestige of sin anywhere in anyone's mind. They were only following prescriptions. So, of course, many other villains have been invented along with their white hat counterparts, as in they used to be in the Western. If you wore a white hat, you were the good guy. If you were a black hat, you were the stagecoach robber or something like that. But to brand the people of Earth, to push the lie that we are all having common enemies and therefore we're all in this fight together, is what the whole deal is. And furthermore, because of that, we should obey our leaders because they know what's best for us. After all, we ourselves voted them in and gave them permission to rule over us. But Paul says in Ephesians 6, we're fighting powers and principalities that rule these so-called leaders. That's who our enemy is, and they're evil to the max. The scared to submit to the all-knowing political authorities, along with their expert scientists, who have the only answers, has only increased, and it will only increase even more. See, in politics, listen to me, please, get this in your head. In politics, there is no such thing as permanent sins or permanent enemies. Only permanent interests. If the deal is right, if we can make money, if we can exert power, and you and I agree, then we're in agreement. We're going to sign a deal. We're going to sign a pact. As the saying goes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That means the same interest of two or more parties who team up against opposition, even though the two parties are not otherwise friendly to one another. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So to get Earth popular to submit to being tagged in order to be traced closer than ever before they decided to introduce various enemies none of which really did the trick until the end of 2019 they did regular old flu scares by naming them bird flu swine flu asian flu etc all the way to what trump called the kung flu <laughs> And using the coronavirus, which is a common denominator to any type of flu infection, if you had SARS, you had corona. If you had what we used to call the regular flu, you had corona. It was never separate. But they isolated this particular one and branded it into our brains and into our psyche as COVID-19. Wow. Now all you got to say is COVID-19 and everybody goes mask and everybody goes give me a shot. Actually, not everybody yet and they're going to have an answer for that too by forcing it sooner or later. They'll have to think of it this way. If you were them and your deal was to get everybody vaxxed and you put it out there voluntarily and you only get so many you want to be here, but you only got this much. What do you do to get it up to here? You start forcing more and more and forcing people and forcing people by scaring them and telling them, well, you can't travel. 
all the way to you can't go buy groceries unless you get it. Forget seeing your doctor. Forget going to, you know, have fun somewhere and go see a circus or something because if you're fully vaxxed, you can do it. If not, you can't. It's already being done, isn't it? If you watch the news at all. This is antichrist. This is demonic as can be. So, of course, this whole thing has been such a successful thing for evil and the completely demonically led powers that be. It's very clear. Have you heard of new strains coming out? See, Corona, even though it's famous and branded, it's getting kind of old. So they don't throw it away because it's the brand. The brand. So they have variations now. And you have to have protection, probably a monthly shot by the time it's all over. Continual vaccinations. This is what they're pushing for. And none of it is medicine, by the way. None of these vaccines contain even one iota of medicine. They are drugs in the most basic sense that screw up the body and the head and all the rest of it. We're told that suddenly by complete surprise all these things have come into being now so that this vaccination isn't so good for this, 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 and this. And this one might do some of this, this, this. All of them are probably pretty good. You know, they call that science. Again, it's nobody's fault except China's, of course. And this virus is exhibited as the arch enemy of humanity at the present time and with great success. Am I right? So we simultaneously have a health enemy that is deadly and a political enemy that threatens our way of life, being China, for the most part. And this is how the public is being played, that is, branded. There used to be a show called Chuck Connors. Branding was a iron, hot iron put on you and they put a mark on you. And the show was called Branded. And cowards were branded. If you were a coward in the, <coughs> in the army, you were branded. You were discharged. If you weren't shot or hung, they branded you as a coward. Some were right here, so you can't hide it. Except a little low-worn hat, maybe. But sooner or later, you got to take it off with the word coward. How would you like to have your skin burned with anything, but especially with coward? What a disgrace that was. Nobody would hire you. Nobody would even speak to you. It was a societal rejection to do this. Prisoners were branded. Chinese prisoners in the past, maybe still, were branded with the Chinese characters for dog. You're a dog because you're not listening to the, to the rules that we set out. Branding is very popular. It never stopped. You know, we brand cattle, right? You've heard of that? Everybody, we're branding cattle. Well, they're branding us just like cattle because that's all we are to them. Them being the powers that be. So never have they achieved such a high rate of vaccinations as currently is the case. And even though those numbers are not true, it is still quite high because most people have bought into the scary lie. The majority of willing guinea pigs have bought into the lies of the demonically driven political antichrist system of rule because they are godless themselves and therefore trust in man rather than the almighty. Open your Bibles to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. I want you to read this yourself. It's very clear and without doubt. Jeremiah chapter 17. Are you there? Yes. <laughs> One of you. <laughs> yes. Verse. Just a minute. 17. Everybody there? Jeremiah 17? Nope. Yes. Okay, we'll wait until that. I want everybody to be there. Because this is so important. Are you there? Yes. Verse 5. Read alone by yourselves. I'm going to read out loud. 
Thus says the Lord. Who's speaking? The Lord. The Lord. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes his flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. See, these are the people who are believing in the lies of the government. They're cursed by God. They're cursed by God. We have an antichrist government. Did you read it yourself? Mm -hmm. Did you hear me proclaim it? Yes. See, these new strains will require ever more different and regularly updated vaccinations to stay ahead of the curve, so we're told. Anheuser-Busch ads, which claim to be tracking the vaccinations in real time, record as of 6 11 21 that 51.9% of Americans received at least one dose and 42.6% were fully vaxxed. That's nearly half. If these numbers are right, that's nearly half of Americans. Israel, which touted the greatest success of any nation, comes in at 57% of the population. And they're raising it now saying, oh, infections are up 10% in America and Israel, everything's going up, up, up. Yet they're opening up everything. Everyone's hiring. It makes no sense. A few months ago, you could go into a restaurant, had to have a mask on, and the people, you know, a few feet away from you were eating around the table with no masks on. I thought the virus spread in the air. What's up with that? It was lying trash. Either we have a virus, it spreads in the air, it'll kill people if you get infected. And in that case, nobody goes anywhere. Everybody wears a mask. But they didn't do that. Because they knew they couldn't. Business must go on for life to go on. See, all this makes perfect sense to the godless masses who trust in man. But unfortunately, also many believers are caught up in this nonsense. People need to read the word of God and believe him. Those who claim to be Christians. We just read it. The man who believes and trusts in man is what? Cursed. Cursed. By who? God. God himself. He will not accept you. For that would be a perversion for him to accept someone like that. So global warming renamed climate change because global warming wasn't doing the trick due to the fact that there's no such thing as they are postulating. Too many actual weather phenomena experts, including the co-founder of the Weather Channel, John Coleman, who has distanced himself from the very thing he started, having testified to the fact that there is no actual scientific evidence, only agenda edited reports that distort and outright lie about the truth of the matter. Now, his co-founder of the Weather Channel has nixed all that and distanced himself from him because he decided to believe the lie. And John Coleman has passed away. He was quite a bit older. Repetition brands into the brain. Repetition brands into the brain. Repetition brands into the brain. The extreme liberal left, or commie Nazi Sharia knuckleheads, have usurped all of the media outlets to push their godless agenda. And it continues more than ever before. We are not surprised by that. We're not fainted by that because we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Evil must get worse and worse, 2 Timothy 3.13. There's no backing up on any of this. So just last week, hot temperatures across the nation, especially both coasts, were advertised as record-breaking, unusual, and out-of-the-ordinary phenomenon, deadly, etc. I'm old enough to have lived through all kinds of summers. I've said it before, I have hung redwood siding 
on a big old house at about 112, 115 in the shade. And it was hot and I hated doing it, but I had to. It was my job. It wasn't the only summer that was over 100. I've spent many summers working outside over 100. Nobody cried about climate change. So it's just the way it is. Sometimes it's hotter than normal and sometimes it isn't. Now, are there things happening in the world as time gets nearer and nearer to the coming of the Lord? Of course. But they're saying because you're alive, because you breathe, you're, you're the problem. Because cattle are alive and they breathe, they're the problem. Just because they fart. Oh, I tell you. So all of these headlines that I was reading started out or added at the end that this was, quote, caused by climate change. Says who? They don't have any proof. They just say it. And because it's already branded in most people, all you got to do is say it. You know how when you know something along with somebody else and you want to keep it a secret and a third party comes in, begins to speak to this other person opposite you about this and you don't want them to say anything, you don't have to say, hey, Susie or Joe or whatever, I don't want you to say it. All you got to do is go... Like that. All you got to do is make some sort of move, don't you? And that person knows you don't want them to say anything because you both already have that in your head. That's what they're doing to us. We've been branded. Now all they got to do is mention it. Time goes by, mention it. Time goes by, mention it. Time goes by, mention it. And it adds to the branding. Don't you get branded. You stay with being branded by the word of the living God. Hallelujah. So they're not just regular hotter than usual summers like we all used to label it. They make something that it isn't. Just like the fake corona death reported. They're in the millions. They just make the claim. Nothing to back up the numbers. Nothing to prove it. They don't have to prove it. People have been branded. You know God says in Genesis 8.22. Oh let's go there. I want you to read it. Go to Genesis, the very first book, chapter 8. Very easy to find, just a couple of flips with a page. Genesis, chapter 8. Oh, yeah. It's the last verse in chapter 8. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Read with me, while the earth remains... Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Yet the world has said, oh yeah, it'll cease. If you don't do what we say, it'll cease. I'm going to believe God because he is the truth. And the world are a bunch of liars serving the devil. And sadly, many professing Christians don't believe that actual report of the Lord. And God's burning won't be some measly uptick in temperatures that are unbearable. He's going to melt the earth with fervent heat down to the molecular level. There'll be no sin left when he's done. No effects of sin when he's done. No more sinners to ruin things like they did the last 6,000 years when he is done. He's going to clean it up for sure. Yeah, there'll be a climate change all right. He's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. He promised it. And since he is not a man, he doesn't lie. He cannot lie. He'd have to self-destruct. There will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth. And it's only about a thousand years away. The Garden of Eden will be renewed in such a way now that sin has been eradicated once and for all that life will be truly what God has designed it to be at the beginning. The difference being that over the last six millennia, 
He has gained billions of willing children. There'll be, not just to Adam and Eve, billions will be in this new garden. Hallelujah. They trust in, in him and his report and are thus blessed beyond their imagination. These are they who chose and only allowed Almighty God to brand their brains. Amen. I decided that when I got saved that day on the couch over here on 18th Street. I decided God was the truth. His word was absolutely right. And I've never regretted. That's been 30 plus years. It's, it's helping me see all the trash that's coming through the internet and the TV and whatever else. Absolute lies. They're so obvious to me that they're lies. But it's because I made up my mind to believe God instead. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Yes. Oh, Father in heaven, your report is true. You are the truth. Scripture says you're not a man that you should lie because men do lie. But you don't lie. You know about evil, but you don't participate in it. Forgive us of our evil that we participate in, Lord. Our flesh is still pretty powerful. If we're saved, our spirits are saved by your grace. And our minds are being renewed by your grace and by your word in a practical way. We want our spirits to be accepted by you when our time comes, should it be before the removal of the church as a whole which surely is not that far off. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving us and that your mercy is renewed every day. Oh, how we need that. I need your mercy to be renewed every day. And I thank you for it. We pray for Israel, Lord, especially the remnant, for you've chosen them as your inheritance because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and your promises to them. And all currently unbelieving Israel, which is a whole bunch of them, will not make it. Two-thirds are not going to make it, according to the prophet Zechariah. So we pray for the remnant, Lord. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, which can only come when you, the Prince of Peace, comes. Yehushalayim. Hallelujah. Set up your kingdom, Lord. Have done with all this trash and evil. In Jesus' name, amen.